math point 10, quadratic functions and equations. On the digital SAT, you will see quadratic functions, which looks like f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c, or graphically, they look like this pretty often. And what this equation means is, let's take a note here. This x is the variable or the independent variable. And this x is basically, if you graph, uh, let's give an example, y equals x squared plus 2x plus uh, minus 3. We have this graph here. The x is the x value. So for example, on this point, the x value of the equation is negative 3. This first negative 3 here, and the 0 is the y. So that's the f of x. And x is the value that changes. So as you change x from negative 3 to negative 2, then y changes its value to a different value. A and b, those are called the co efficient and coefficient basically just means the number next to the variable c is the uh, you can call c the y intercept 0 comma c so whatever this c is is the value of the graph at the y axis for example in my equation here i have this plus c being negative 3 so that means in the graph on this y-axis, oh, sorry, on this yeah y-axis, I have the y-intercept at zero comma negative three. So this negative three here is this negative three, and that's the y-intercept for zero comma negative three point. When you have a equation like this where a is uh, negative, then that means you would have a uh, n shape, or maybe you can just draw it out. Uh, draw a n shape looking like this okay. and when you have a is greater than zero then you have a u shape or you can just draw this u shape like this so if you look at this graph here this is the u shape the one that goes kind of like upwards down and up uh, opening up opening to the the upward direction then that means the graph is a positive a value so in this graph here the a value is one Let's take a look at a few examples and um, you'll find out that you just need to know very basic properties of functions and you can solve many of the most, if not all, of the questions on the digital SAT without going into too much detail on uh, what you're supposed to learn in your math class in school. Now here's an example. A question that looks like this, it tells you the function f is defined above. That basically means the uh, there's a function, a graph, and the graph equation is this. If k is a positive integer, which of the following could represent the graph of this in the xy plane? So if you um, solve it the math way, then earlier I mentioned that the a value here, uh, the coefficient for the x squared, if that is a positive value, then it's a u shape. If it's a negative value, then it's an n shape going downward. So if you look at this equation here, you have x times x equals this x times this x here equals x squared, and x squared is positive. So you know, uh, if you know the math, if you remember the properties, then you know that this equation cannot be these two graphs and must be these two. Uh, and then you can continue to um, solve it by knowing that um, if you're looking for uh, the equation of a graph, uh, another point to look at is where the graph intersects at the um, the y-axis, as I mentioned before, and as well as on the x-axis. And on this graph, this this graph here intercepts at negative 2 and positive 3, while this graph intersects at negative 3 and positive 2. And this intersect, uh, intersection is the, uh, the root of the equation. So in this equation, we have x plus 3. That means the root the root is where the graph is 0. And we'll talk about that later. Um, but in this equation, we have x um, being negative 3 as one of the roots and x as k as the other root. So if you know this, know the math that you learned in your math class, then you know that this graph has to intersect at negative uh, x equals negative 3 and k. So by looking at the graph, you know that this one, 
intersects at negative three, and so this is the answer. Now, if you don't remember the math, if you don't remember that the roots are um, what the when the equation equals to zero, and this has to be negative three because negative three plus three is zero, so zero times something is zero. If you don't remember that, then perhaps you can still solve this with a calculator, and let me show you how. Um, you type in the equation here, so we have x plus three times x minus k, right? But k is a number that we don't know. Uh, the question doesn't tell you what k is. It's k is a positive integer. But what is k? k, uh, you don't know. So we can add a slider here. And since it tells you k is a positive integer, it's a whole number, that means the smallest value has to be 1 or greater. And for the large, for how big that k is, SAT usually doesn't give you numbers that are too big, especially if you see this x plus 3. You know that this k can't be like 53,000. So we can put, uh, let's say, 15 as an example. Um, in the end, it's going to be less than 15, but just 15 as an example. Step is how, um, how, how you want the x value to change as I move the slider. So I'm going to put, x, uh, put the step as 1. So that means when I move the slider, it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4. So I'm going to do that. See, this goes 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, if I make the step as 2, then it's going to be 1, and then 3, and then 5. It's going to be moving in intervals of 2. So here I want step as 1. And I can look at this graph here and see when one of these graphs looks like one of these two graphs, or one of these four, if I don't remember the n shape and the u shape property. Uh, and in the at this location, um, none of the graphs looks like this. So I'm going to move the k over one more step. And this looks just like this, intersecting at negative 3 here, intersecting at negative 6 at the bottom, intersecting at 2 here. So these point all match, and uh, C doesn't, neither do A and B. So that means the answer is D. Let's take a look at another practice question here. You have an equation that's complicated, and SAT sometimes give you a um, oddly stupid expression like this to try to make the question looks look more difficult but this is really just any number this number here could be like three or negative two uh, and this number could be like five uh, but SAT just uses these very complicated looking numbers at times so number one the vertical height in meters vertical height in meters of the upper arch of the harbor bridge in Sydney Australia um, and I think these details don't really matter um, it's just the height of something. That's what you should be reading in your head. The height of something can be modeled by the function above, by this function. So you know this is a function that shows the height of something. And x the vertical, the horizontal distance. So x is the horizontal distance. So this is kind of like looking from um, from your perspective, like looking forward. Um, and and this is like the the skyline going going upwards, and this is the ground. Okay, uh, x is the, the horizontal distance, like the ground distance along the way, um, and this is the graph. In the graph, the point zero zero, that's this point. So always good to, as you read the question, look at the graph and know uh, label the graph, so that the words and the graph make sense. Represent the entry to the bridge. Which of the following points represent the exit from the bridge on the opposite end? Um, and so hopefully by reading the question, you can understand that the question is saying you enter here and this is where you um, exit the bridge uh, because the, the the bridge will be at at the, uh, the, the ground level. So this is the point that you're looking for. This is the entry and this is the exit on the opposite end. So this is literally how like the bridge looks like. So once you understand the question, uh, hopefully you remember that on a xy plane, the point here, uh, this point here, would be something comma zero because it's at the height, the y value of zero. So right away you know that a and b are wrong and they can't be right because the second number here, the y value is not zero. And the first value is the x value, and the x value is this. So without really doing any calculation, without looking into the, the numbers and getting confused, this number here, it even tells you the answer. Uh, this number here is going to be around 500. 
Um, and the only choice that can possibly be the answer is D503. Um, I mentioned in the previous lesson that SAT doesn't give you numbers that are super, super close and you have to choose between like 503 or 502. It's going to be something that's right and something that's way off. So the answer for this one is D, even though the numbers here and the equation and everything could look very scary. We'll do a couple more questions. This graph looks like this, and it tells you if the graph crosses the y-axis, cross the y-axis here at the point k. So this is 0 comma k, that's the y-intercept. What is the value of k? I ask you what is the value of the y-intercept. And so if you remember what I mentioned in the very beginning, this equation, the value of c here, is the y-intercept then right away you should know that this point here is the C and so the answer for K is 12. If you don't remember that then let's do it the calculator way. You type in the equation so that you see this graph graphically. And now we have this equation that tells you the the graph crosses the y-axis. This graph crosses the y-axis at the point 0, comma k. So that point is 0, comma 12. <laughs> and you get the answer right away. It's pretty stupid uh, how, how easy these questions look like um, once you know how to utilize the tools. In the xy plane, the graph of the function has two intercepts. Uh, to x-intercept. So x-intercept is the point that intercepts the x-axis. So it's kind of like these two points for the previous graph. What is the distance between the x-intercept? So this one um, may be a little bit harder if you don't remember how the graph and the equation combine together. Um, but for time's sake, um, and something that I want you to perhaps focus a little bit more on is, uh, especially if you feel like math is kind of hard, uh, maybe that's why you're watching these videos in the first place, is to, for every question, think, does this question, uh, can I solve this question with a calculator? And the answer for this number three happens to be yes again. I plug in the equation. Yeah, I can do f of x or y equals uh, something. x squared plus 5x plus 4. Now I have this graph and ask what is the distance between the x-intercepts. So the only skill that you need to know is, or s only points, a few minor points. One is uh, remember to try to see if you can use a calculator. In this case, it, it looks good. Next is knowing that the x-intercepts are the points that intersects the uh, x-axis. And then once you know both of those, I think, minor points, then you see in the graph that you have a x-intercept at negative 4, you have another one at 3, uh, at, <laughs> at negative 1. Ask you for the distance between these two points, so if you can just count uh, 1, 2, 3, and the answer is 3. <laughs> okay, let me see which one can be a little bit um, more difficult. Um, let's take a look at I'll do I'll, I'll just do this next question and I'll try to have you do the do the rest um, with by yourself with a classmate and then go over those with the teacher which of the following is true or are true you have f of 0 equals f of 1 f of 0 equals f of 4 um, if you understand what uh, they mean um, then this question should be pretty easy also. f of 0 this equation this graph here is a graph of f f of 0 means a graph at x equals 0 so at x equals 0 at this point the graph is at this point so this point here corresponds to f of 0 and f of 1 is f the graph at 1 is this point f of 4 is the graph at 4 it's this point Looking at these three points, which of the following is true or are true? Is f of 0, is this point here the same as this point in terms of height? No, it's not. Is f of 0 in the same as f of 4? Yes, they're both like 1-ish. So that means the answer is this one, so it's b. Okay, I'll have you do the rest. I'll move on to the next 
part of this point and then we can um, go over the ones at the top with your teacher afterwards. In on the SAT or in math, you would see you may see the word root sometimes, um, but you may also see the word root in different ways. You, they can be called roots, or they can be called uh, solutions. They can also be called uh, zeros. Even though on the SAT you don't really see the word zeros as much, you will see this in your your math class, your um, algebra class, and your calculus class or pre-calculus class at some point and you will see it says x intercept as we did before a couple times it says the graph intersects at the y, uh, at the x-axis that's these two points or you could also see on the test it says where y equals zero roots solutions zeros intercepts and where y equals zero they all mean the same thing just keep in mind that these are different ways to say the same thing and on the test if you're asked to find the roots or the solution or whenever a equation equals to zero of course this y equals zero is also the same as where f of x equals zero because y is f of x they're the same there are four ways that you can find the roots of a quadratic equation um, the way that you learn last in your school is quadratic uh, no it's uh, completing the square and this is slightly complicated um, and if you don't know how to complete the square then forget about it you don't need to do that for the digital SAT then there's another way to do it it's called quadratic formula you can use the quadratic formula and the quadratic formula is that y equal uh, y equals um, uh, b negative b plus or minus square root of blah 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 it's that that equation that formula if you don't remember that don't sweat it you don't need to know that for the digital SAT another way to do it is by using factor factorization if you know how to factor a equation so factoring this into x plus or minus something times x plus or minus something equals to zero. If you know how to do that, then then you can do that and you can find the roots or the solution for the graph. And if you don't know that, then for the sake of SAT and getting a good score and getting the highest score, highest improvement as you can in such a short time, I would again suggest you to use the calculator. And let me show you how, how to do that. Completing the square, originally I plan on going over how to complete the square for this, but because it will take a while and I, I don't want to spend time going over things that you won't be using on the test anyway, um, let's just use the calculator for this again. So we'll type in 2x squared plus 8x minus 1. And when you have an equation that says this equation equals 0, that means it's at the point where this graph intercepts the the uh, x-axis so it's the solution or the roots or the x-intercept by looking at the graph you can see that it intersects at this point which is negative 4.121 and intersects at this point which is 0 0.121 and these two points are the value for x and you can do that for the other ones too uh, put in the calculator and you can see it factorization uh, I don't remember if you ever need to factor this. Uh, there may be questions where it says which of the following is the same as this and it may give you a few like x plus something, x minus something and to see which one it is. But you have the calculator so let's use the calculator. 2x squared plus 12x plus 16 looks like that and this graph intersects at negative 4 and negative 2. So if the question says which of the following is the same as this equation above, you'll see a question that looks like uh, the options that looks like x. Uh, so x my x plus four times x plus two, uh, and uh, x minus four, x minus two, things that things like that. 
Um, and, and this graph is more vertical because there's a, a two factor there. So if I put the two there, then you see that these two graphs are the same and these two graphs are, and the other ones are different. And you'll see these options at the bottom. If you don't know which one it is, then just draw all of them out in the graph and you can see which one it is by just, just looking. Um, and so, so these are extra questions there that you can try to, try to uh, factor if you want to, if not, then then don't worry about it. Uh, and this is originally wanting to let you practice how to find the the roots or the solutions to a equation using the quadratic formula. But but if you don't remember the formula, then maybe there isn't a need to even write out the formula here. I'll skip over these practice questions. They shouldn't be too hard if you understand everything above and if you know how to plug this into the calculator and compare uh, the choices with this one and see which ones are identical. But if you have questions, then feel free to ask and we'll do our best to answer. Okay, And number of solution is something that is pretty important on the test. It can be hard at first, but once you once you get it, then um, then it shouldn't be too hard. Um, and I feel perhaps instead of teaching this the traditional way of uh, going over um, how to tell if two equations have zero solution or one solution or two solution, um, maybe maybe just just graph it. Um, Originally, you would need uh, to use the quadratic equation to to find out whether the or, or to factor and find use the quadratic equation to find out how many solutions there are in a uh, sorry in one equation one quadratic equation. But if we have the calculator, then we can type that into the calculator minus eight x minus twelve uh, equals one, and we'll remove those, and even. Yeah, so I zoomed in too much, and even though this looks like a line, and you might be tempted to say there's one solution. Remember, solution means number of times it crosses the x-axis. Even though it looks like it's a straight line, so the answer is one. Make sure you zoom out a little bit to to see the whole picture, and especially whenever you have to a power of two, it's always going to be this shape, either the U shape or the N shape. It's never going to be a just a pure straight line. So if you see a straight line, that means you're not uh, zoomed out enough. Or, or maybe if you zoom out too much, then it might look like one, uh, like one line like that. But it's a U shape for this one. Um, so the shorthand for for digital SAT uh, numbers, you know, the number of solution uh, is use the calculator. Is when you after you graph it, when the graph intersects the x axis at no point and this would be at one point and two solution is at two points so in this case it intersects at two points one and two so the answer is uh, two solutions for this one and for the rest you plug those in you look at the graph and you know how many solutions there are but um, i'll leave that up to you And in math, in school, you'll learn about how to find the uh, the turning point of a graph. And so you'll learn something like negative b over 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 a or over two a. If you don't remember that, don't worry. Uh, we'll, we'll just just graph it. So, for example, if you have this graph here, turning point is where the graph turns. So in this graph, this is the turning point. So if you're asked what is the turning point of this, then you put that in the calculator, x minus 2 to the second power plus 3. Let's go home. And the turning point is here. So this point here is 2 comma 3. So the answer is 2 comma 3. Uh, forget about these notes here. They are irrelevant for the digital SAT because you have the calculator and you don't need to learn how to find this point based on like a specific kind of equation. It can look like this. It can look like f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus, 
plus C. It doesn't really matter. Plug into the calculator and look at the graph and look at the turning point. Okay, so so forget about this. This is useless uh, for digital SAT because you don't need to know. All right, and that is all for math point ten. Go ahead and do the practice question that we skipped, then do the classwork and the homework, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye.